Good afternoon once again, distinguished colleagues. The improvement of all methods of uh, breast uh, tumor interventions has currently led to the significant lifespan increase for breast cancer patients. In this way, the preservation of quality of life and decent life is uh, getting increasingly relevant for those patients after treatment and we can do that uh, with the reduced toxicity of anti-tumor treatment. One of the important toxic effects is the so-called cardiac toxicity or heart damage. These factors can be attributed to the patient as such. Uh, younger than 15, older 65 years old, uh, diabetes, obesity, arterial hypertension, oral stenosis, uh, and smoking habits. The um, medication factors, medication therapy, almost all anti-tumor medications that are used for breast cancers have cardiotoxicity of this or that extent. These are uh, anorexicline, cyclosphosphamide, taxane, trastuzumab, uh, and some others. They have completely different types of damage effect for cardiovascular defense. Some of them result in irreversible myocard damage, and some of them result in reversible cardiovascular damage. Antracycline uh, medications have biggest toxicity, and this has direct correlation with the dosage. Cardiomyopathy is the biggest threat because it um, results in heart failure and patient death. It's quite a rare complication, fortunately, uh, with 1.5 percentage of cases, but it can occur in a year, year and a half after the last induction of anthracyclines. Previously, we thought that only uh, radiation therapy has this prolonged uh, cardiotoxicity, but this therapy also is toxin. That's our favorite radiation therapy. What does it do? Heart is the complex heterogeneous structure, and toxicity, uh, toxic sensitivity is also different. Damage mechanisms are, could be a multifactorial and can affect capillaries and coronary arteries as well as other elements. The damage of uh, small capillaries uh, result uh, in myocard death, the damage of major vessels results in the coronary arteria stenosis. You can see a tiny gap in the coronary arteria a number of years after the radiotherapy. Other clinical manifestations include the acute and chronic pericarditis, myocarditis, heart failures, functional uh, heart valve, uh, dysfunctions that can lead up to late uh, complications. This slide shows just a tiny portion of a great bulk of studies focused on the RT role for mortality that result from the cardiovascular dysfunctions and uh, this type of therapy increases the likelihood of uh, cardiovascular diseases. But consider the timing that was all before the 80s when the patients received the treatment. When all the types of uh, RT was assigned with high fraction dosages that affected kidney and lymph nodes with the gamma radiation, and so on. Since uh, 1985, with the new era of radiation therapy, the number of cardiovascular 
damage is uh, significantly reduced. Look here, we started from 1970s and in 2015 we get data from our blocking center. We can see that the average dosage that affect the heart and the medial structures, the damage of them got down by five folds. Our American colleagues introduced these wonderful studies with good medial studies of five and a half years. They studied uh, 66,000 patients. All they had radical resection with the adjuvant RT. The um, data shows that there is no significant difference in 15 years survival rate and cardiac mortality. After 15 years, the authors conclude that RT for breast cancer patients with left side localizations with the use of modern technology does not lead to the cardio mortality. And that's indeed so, because with 3G CRT, the average dose for heart varies from, seven to, from 1 to 7 gray. But the volume of uh, surgical intervention also plays a major role in that. We know that when we radiate the uh, remaining part of the breast is significantly lower than after radical mastectomy. New technologies and new data, but we still have all the limitations for coronary vessels, for lungs, and for hearts. There are a number of guidelines that we are using for dosage as far as critical organs are concerned. I think that you also use Quantec guidelines in your respective institutions. The Danish research group and some other institutions suggest that with classical fractioning, the volume of heart that uh, got 25 grave at minus 10 percent has minus less than 1 percent of possibility of cardio complications. It's still unknown which uh, heart area affects most. Uh, some for researchers focus on the middle part of the heart, some others on the left coronary artery and Danish Radiologists uh, claim that the dose for the left coronary artery should be zero, so no dosage, no radiation whatsoever. However, we should say that these guidelines have recommend recommendation nature, and we should not compromise uh, treatment volumes. 2013. A major meta-analysis was published with the over... Since 1958-2009, Sara Derby and Al calculated, and now this graph practically shows um, different data. The increase of the mean dose on heart per one gray increases the risk of cardiac events by 7.5%. The authors concluded that the risk of uh, cardio ischemia occurs during the first five years after radiotherapy and remain significant during the whole lifespan of a patient. And as a result of studies, they concluded that there is no threshold dose on the heart. It's individual, and some patients may react to a small dose and in many presentations, uh, hemotherapists talk about that. For example, the dose of tetracycline cumulative to 200 milligram per square meter uh, had that uh, manifested cardiotoxicity. Everything is individual, but we have to stick to the adopted recommendations. The year of 2015, uh, Taylor from Great Britain publishes a big meta-analysis. Patients were treated in 2003-2013. This is modern radiotherapy. They analyzed 149 studies for treating patients with left-sided breast cancer. Basing on that analysis, they found that the mean dose 
was 5.5 gray per heart. Separately, they analyzed 390 planes of radiotherapy in order to understand which of modern methods of radiotherapy is most sparing for heart. Separately, they took the groups of patients who didn't go through parastermal uh, chain of lymph node radiation, and on the other hand, those patients whose parasternal uh, node chain was radiated. In radiating parasternal nodes, the mean dose per heart increases by twice. The, we also see that the best or the lowest cardinal dose was in patients who didn't go through parasternal uh, chain radiation, those who were treated with respiratory delay, a deep inspiration. On the right, you see 9.2 of the mean dose on the heart. Those patients uh, where radiation of parasternal chain was one from one direct field, and uh, so we have to use wide tangential fields on MRT. And it was surprising. 5.6, the mean dose on heart without radiation of parasternal. And of course, it's no secret uh, that uh, the best uh, sparing distribution is proton radiation. So we wish it developed in our country that we could achieve low cardiac dosages. So when these studies, uh, such as Ontario and START A and B on hyperfraction appeared in our department, it caused uh, alertness because, on the one hand, we started application uh, hyperfractioning 266-267 was strictly in line with the rules that were suggested. And one of the main rules was. Uh, that uh, right-sided localization so that the mean dose on heart would be zero. That was one of the terms for hyperfractioning. So they published a 10 year follow-up uh, in terms of frequency of cardiopathology, and they never identified any differences in the frequency of cardiopathologies in standard and hyperfractionating modes of radiation. What sort of modern methods of radiation therapy will allow to decrease cardiac dose? Primarily the methods with the increase of distance between heart and the chest wall. And one of them is radiation therapy with the prone position of a patient. The majority of studies we see uh, that uh, um, a reduction of the volume of heart in the zone of radiation by 75-78%. And all the works show that more significant reduction of cardinal dose takes place in a large size of um, uh, the breast versus small volume. Another method which uh, was interesting to us, since 2012 we've been treating patients in our department um, this is radiotherapy in the optimal phase of breathing. So there's a breath hold, a deep inspiration, the last increase in volume by twice, and cranial caudal, um, and they shift that cranial caudal direction, removing heart out of the zone of radiation. We analyze clinical parameters of the planes of radiotherapy in 120 patients with breast cancer at free breathing and optimal phase of breathing. And we saw significant reduction of radiated volume of uh, heart by 70% reduction of the dose load on heart by 64%. And it will allow to further decrease the frequency of cardiac complications in patients with left-sided local locations. Yes, the use of more complex modern technologies in radiation therapy, different methods of con uh, of formative radiation therapy. We have to welcome the methods that allow to decrease traditional volumes of radiation of the breast. And one of such methods is the method of accelerated partial radiation of uh, a breast, uh, APBI, which implies radiation of a limited volume of tissue of the breast. This is the bed of the excised tumor 
plus 2 minus 2.5 centimeters can be formed by brachytherapy, intratissue balloon, intraoperational radiotherapy, proton distance radiotherapy. In one of the studies, when TBI was used by brachytherapy method, they saw reduction of dose load on heart by 4 and ipsilateral lung by twice when we see a patient with left-sided breast cancer, we have to naturally um, uh, collect that multidisciplinary concilium and remember that reduction of toxicity uh, depends on thorough examination of patients with left-sided localization. We need cardiological consultation with EEG, thorough history, uh, knowledge of history of the disease, concomitant diseases, uh, preceding medication. We have to observe uh, um, uh, the present cardiac diseases. We have to uh, substantiate the plan of therapy. Uh, uh, we have to look at peristernal lymphatic nodes. We have to choose adequate program radiation three, considering tolerance doses. We have to be careful about new directions radiation therapy. For example, hypofractioning and conduct treatment in line with the recommendations of Astro uh, Saint Gallen and conduct regular assessment of the function of cardiovascular system with anthracycline and radiation therapy in these patients during 10 years. We shouldn't forget to send patients to cardiologists and then we will hope that our, the hearts of our patients will beat as rhythmically as it is here. Thank you. Dear colleagues, questions? Mike, please. Omazov Center, will you tell us, do we perform any pharmacological protection of cardiological complications before chemotherapy and radiotherapy? Actually, we need to send patients to cardiologists, and they have a big list of drugs. The cardiologists, no. I, I just written EEG, but cardiologists define anthropamine I. It's not uh, regular anthropamine, but anthropamine I, and they perform strain that contractibility of myocardium. We send our patients before radiation therapy and after uh, the, to a cardio center, and depending on the results, then we prescribe statins, antiarrhythmia medication, and on our part, usually they write, I have no financial interest, but our department likes Trental. And we know that this pentoxifilin is a powerful anti-aggregate. And if um, you take Trental and cardiotoxicity, you will see how miraculous this medication is. It reduces radiation thoraxis or of oropharyngeal zone, anal cancer, reduces fibrosis of capsule of implant after reconstructive surgery. So we prescribed Trintol, and there is a study, 400 milligram three times a day together with docoferol acetate uh, during two, three months after radiation therapy. Very interesting methods. Will you tell us? To what extent does it extend the time of radiation at inspiration? How many times do you have to breathe in? Well, you mean at the breath hold? Well, you, you'll love this method. He won't choose other, other approach. If now the treatment of patient is 15, the here is uh, 30, 40 minutes. One patient, there are many fields. Uh, they actually will have a doctor who invent Fortunately, there is not enough money in our clinics to purchase 
some novel uh, devices, but there are cameras that uh, are hung over a patient. It's better when you see it yourself, you understand how you have to breathe in, at what breath. And another thing, when you just uh, listen to some instructions, breathe deeper, a bit deeper, deeper. With this device, everything is quicker. Thank you.